All right, and we are back for another Superman review. I know you've been waiting on him a little bit late, but hey, let's get right on into it. We know Superman got captured last week. He he was held. Well, we don't know where they took him. We just know he was overwhelmed and they uh, took him somewhere. Now we know he's being held in this cell. And kind of like I talked about last in last week's video, the general is questioning him, and we get to find out a bit more uh, about not only why the general has a problem with Superman, but also a little bit of a, a hint, a sneak peek into Clark's arrival on Earth, which, by the way, th this whole sequence is, is giving me some real Dragon Ball Z Saiyans uh, invading planets vibes, because essentially what we're seeing here is that when Clark arrived on Earth, uh, a, a, like a big portal opened, and there's like the, there's an invading force that's uh, right outside the portal, and we we see this through the eyes of the general in a flashback. He actually shows Clark this flashback through I guess a hologram, and it's it's just a fancy way of showing when he was younger and what his beef is. But anyway, yeah, they they attacked and the what they want you to believe is that it's the Kryptonians attacking. Now we know from Superman history that the Kryptonians generally aren't. Uh, an invading aggressive force at least not any of the versions of them that I've seen now of course you know you have General Zod and uh, like I said a couple weeks ago Nala and uh, I think Jax is his name from the animated series but I think usually those are kind of outliers like they're, they're those random aggressive Kryptonians that pop up whereas in this case again like I said it was like there was a whole invading force which to me honestly leads me to believe that there's this is probably some type of misdirect. They, they could be Kryptonians, or maybe they uh, what do they call Daxamites? I believe, which are basically like Kryptonians, but not yeah. Superman lore, okay. <laughs> but yeah, so the general, a younger general, and Waller are like at this training base or whatever. There's their base somewhere, and that's when the attack happens. So that shows us what his beef is with Superman because he saw. Or he saw that Superman's abilities were being used by these invaders, which again, I guess for right now, we'll just say the alleged Kryptonians who were attacking. And basically, the, their attack was halted when a big explosion happened on their side, which again, I'm almost positive that was probably Krypton uh, blowing up, maybe. Again, we, we're just kind of spitballing here. We don't know. We just noticed a big boom and then the portal kind of shut off. So that's basically what the general and Amanda Waller's problem is with Superman because a lot of their troops and everything was were taken taken down in that attack. And they've been kind of plotting this revenge for a while now, even though I don't know. I mean, I guess they saw Clark's ship come through the portal too because Clark does mention that he saw his ship. So maybe they just were scheming and planning for... Maybe when he grew up. Actually, no, because when they, they actually mentioned that, the, the general mentions later on in the video, in the video, in the episode, that Clark would have been a child around the time that this attack happened. So they, they, they kind of acknowledge certain stuff like that in the episode. But in any case, uh, Clark, when he's, while he's questioning Clark and showing him all this, Clark actually breaks down in tears because he's, it, it basically hurts him deeply that that his people attacked or what he believes is his people attacked earth so viciously and when clark starts crying it's like that actually kind of has a general he, he kind of backpedals a bit because he's surprised to see superman crying at these actions so he knows that it's pretty much a sincere thing so he leaves clark in there meanwhile lois and jimmy are trying to find a way to uh locate clark they have the, the kids that they worked with in the first episode kind of doing a citywide search. That's pretty much all that's going on with them in the episode. It's not a, a lot for Lois and Jimmy to do until later on. Uh, we get back to the general and Amanda Waller. And like I said earlier, this was that scene where he's telling her that, well, Superman would have been a child when his attack happened. So he really isn't part of that aggressive force. But Amanda Waller being who she is, because we all know Amanda Waller is a a word I'm not gonna say right now <laughs> but we know Amanda Waller is not cool at all 
So her whole thing is like, okay, look, yeah, forget you. We destroying Superman. You ain't. You I mean, yeah, you you not, you not part of this conversation. But the general, more or less, is in charge still. So he's kind of telling her to back off. Well, while Waller was watching the the prisoner cameras, which uh, housed all the the Suicide Squad still, she apparently noticed, even though they didn't, they didn't they made it look like she didn't she didn't notice, but we know she did because it's Amanda Waller. But um, Livewire, she actually managed to summon her electricity without her her tech. So that's leading me to believe that not only is she basically a metahuman now, but it, it might be that all these all the Suicide Squad members in this show are going to end up developing the powers that they've used from their tech at some point. She's the only one in the episode who actually used the powers without having the tech on because when they made their uh, breakout, which by the way, this was due to Amanda Waller uh, doing some tampering with stuff, but when the Su Suicide Squad busted out, they all went back to using their tech. And for the most part, they really weren't too much of a threat. They were just trying to get out of there. Parasite, on the other hand, was trying his best to get to Superman because he has a score to settle. So he gets his suit back and goes straight to Superman and starts attacking him, who, by the way, doesn't want to fight back because he's just kind of in this slump and he's just depressed because of what he saw. So he's not really trying to defend himself. Well, the general kind of distracts Parasite a little bit, not necessarily intentionally because he's like, what are you doing? But he distracts him enough for Clark to basically get away because Clark hears Lois screaming his name uh, looking for him. So he kind of zips on, he kind of zips out of there because uh, it, when Parasite uh, knocked him out of his holding cell, which had like this, um, what I'm assuming is a red sunlight ray, which I'm wondering how in the world they knew to use that. But anyway, um, <laughs> when Parasite knocks him out of that out of that area, he pretty much gets his powers back, but he's kind of beat up. So when he escapes, he ends up in the middle of the city somewhere, and one of the little kids finds him, and then she takes him to their hideout. Lois and Jimmy show up and they had to give him this pep talk about how he's not a monster and how he's a hero and everything like that. Meanwhile, Parasite, who has gained the ability to make himself stronger by absorbing electricity around him, has become like this huge kaiju monster and he's like stampeding through town, through Metropolis looking for Superman. So. Everybody's panicking and everything, and then Superman sees that he's out there, so of course Superman's gonna go to stop him. And he's doing all he can, but for one thing, he's still a tad bit, I think, beaten down from his earlier encounter. And then he's also kind of dealing with his own mental issues in terms of being conflicted. But um, as he's fighting Parasite, Lois and Jimmy realize that he's that Parasite is siphoning electricity from the city. So Jimmy gets on his uh, social on his YouTube page because it's basically a YouTube page, Firebird, and he tells everybody to shut off their power. And this is of course after Lois gives this nice, inspiring speech about how Superman is just like them. He's a hero and he's a good person. You know, classic superhero speech. She gives this speech, and then everybody starts to shut their power off and everything. So this pretty much zaps Parasite of the power that he was using to uh, make himself stronger. And Superman pretty much at that point takes care of things real quick. Like he zips through the armor, snatches uh, Ivo out, and that's that. The day is saved. So basically, the episode winds down with Lois and Clark talking, and Jimmy's holding Lois's bag. And he drops the little orb that has the holograms showing the super evil Superman from the other universes. And that's pretty much... Oh, no, before I forget, <laughs> we cut back to the general. And we find out that Waller has taken over. And she's, or his directive, she has this directive for him to basically take out Superman. So, again, we, we knew this was coming. And before I forget, also, Slade uh, is attacked by Livewire in the episode, and she takes out his eyes. So now he looks closer to the proper death stroke that we're used to. But yeah, that that's pretty much the episode. It, it was a lot of stuff in the episode, 
and is is kind of one of those things that is more and more they answer questions but then they gave you more questions too which is it's a sign of a good story you know that that's that it's going to keep you coming back for more and like i always say i'm enjoying what they're doing with with the uh, series it's kind of taking things and turning them on their head now one thing i hope they don't do is take this route that they've taken with batman stories in the recent years where batman's parents we we've always thought that batman's parents were just good philanthropists but lately in certain stories they've been making this thing where well actually thomas and martha were were involved with the mob or or they were part of this secret organization or they were they were, in other words saying that they were bad people and i think that that's kind of i wasn't a, the hugest fan of it i think the first time i saw it was in the telltale batman game where you find out that uh, bruce's dad was again like i said i think part of the mob or he worked with the mob so something shady i can't remember what it was this has been a while since i played that game but i don't want them to do this with superman where they're like actually the kryptonians were like this really aggressive invading force kind of like the saiyans or like the viltrumites from invincible like, like let's keep the kryptonians as is as the scientific peaceful people that they they usually are depicted as because there's, there's no need to change that i mean it's it's one of those things where it's like if it's not broke don't fix it because there's no reason to change the kryptonians that they they don't the backstory of the kryptonians in my opinion doesn't or shouldn't have that much of an effect on a present day superman story when we're dealing with present day superman now if we were again doing this series about krypton like that uh one show then maybe but i just don't think there's a, re a reason to change the kryptonians up too much to have them like this invading force because like i said they really reminded me of saiyans when i saw that scene but yeah the, the next episode we have one more episode i think in the season i think they said this is a 10 episode season so they released the preview they were late doing it but they released a preview for episode 10 and there's kryptonite involved and we see that superman or Clark sees that, or he, he sees the holograms of the evil Superman. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. That's going to be interesting. But that's pretty much all I have to say about this one. Hit that like button if you like the video. Drop a comment to let me know what you thought about the invading Kryptonians, Saiyans, Viltrumites, Doxamites, whatever, whatever they are. <laughs> let me know what you think they are. How about that? And remember, we have the high ground. Catch you later.